Hare Krishna. So Krishna has described the divine qualities in the previous verses. Now he is touching upon the demonic qualities in shloka number 4. Let's see that now. Dambho darpo bhimanascha Krodha parushya mevacha Agnanam cha bijatasya Partha sampada masurim So here Krishna is saying, he is listing down some of the very prominent demonic qualities and he starts with Dambaha means pride Darpa Darpaha arrogance Abhimanaha conceit Krodaha anger Parushyam, speaking harshly. And there is a cha that is added. So that basically means opposite of all the qualities which were there in the previous verses. And then he is saying, Agyanam, ignorance, lack of discrimination power. And Abhijatasya, Sampadam, Asurim. So here it is said that the ones who is born of these qualities, hmm, so they belong to the demonic nature. And then he says, Partha, O son of Pritha. Now it's a very nice thing to note that Krishna is giving us both the divine qualities and the demonic qualities. So especially in this chapter, you know, we, we should do an activity. When we are reading these verses, when you are hearing about these verses, we should self-introspect and contemplate what are the different qualities which Krishna is mentioning and which one do I have? So it was said in Satyuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, the demons and the demigods, they were there in separate two different bodies in two different territories. But now in the age of Kali, both demons and the devatas or demigods, they are there in the same body. I mean the demonic qualities and the divine qualities are there in the same person. So, it will not be like, I just have the, the divine qualities or I just have demonic qualities. No. It will always be a mix and match of both. But then it's our endeavor to make sure that we inculcate, we imbibe what? The divine qualities. So now when Krishna is describing the demonic qualities, we should see, are we behaving like this or not? If we are behaving, then yes, we have to rectify ourselves. And how to do that? By praying to Krishna. That, oh Krishna, please help. I have got these demonic, demonic qualities that you are speaking about in. We can quote also to Krishna. 16th chapter, Shloka number 4. <laughs> so let's discuss from the purport. Very beautifully, it is described. Each and every quality, the demonic quality is described by Prabhupada very, very wonderfully. In this verse, the royal road to hell is described. So anyone who has these qualities exclusively, such a person is paving his path towards hell. There is no other destination. No, destination is fixed for that person. That is Naraka, hell. Here, the first quality, that is Dambaha, it is spoken about that. Hmm? So, Damba basically means what? Here it is said, the demonic want to make a show of religion and, and advancement in spiritual science, although they do not follow the principles. So such people, no, or such qualities called as Dambha. And we will find in the age of Kali, there are many, many people like that. Many people. Externally, they will show that they are really great advanced sages or saints. But then, internally, fully contaminated, not following any rules and regulations. Sometimes people also make the statement, Aray, bhakti bahar nahi, bhakti dil ke andar hona Such nonsensical statements they make. That's obvious. No? Bhakti, the bhava, obviously will be there in the heart. But to get to that level, one has to go through the rules and regulations nicely under the guidance of the spiritual master and strictly follow and do nice seva. Then the person can reach to that stage where he can say, okay, I have got some bhava. Till then there is no bhav for sure. It's only contamination in the heart. So, these people are dhongis who 
show that they are very religious, but then they don't follow any principles. Hmm. Second, it's it's talking about darpa. What is that? They are always arrogant or proud in possessing some wealth of education or so much wealth. So it is said, Kunti Maharani says this in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Janma, Aishwarya, Shruta and Shri. Janma means very high birth in a very high aristocratic family. Janma, Aishwarya means lot of wealth. Shruta means very high education and Shri means beauty. So she says anyone who has these four, they are not qualified for practicing bhakti. <clears throat> Obviously, there are many, many exceptions. But it's a general statement that is made. Why? Because anyone who has these four qualities, or these four things, these four things, or four opulence, so such people will naturally be proud of possessing these four things. And when we are proud of something, we start seeing everyone as very, very low. Right? So such, such quality is also categorized in the category of demonic qualities. So that is Damba. The next quality that is given here is about Abhimana. What is the definition of Abhimana? The desire to be worshipped by others and demand respectability although they do not command respect. See, these people who have these demonic qualities, they feel they are something. They feel that they are something and they demand respect that I should be respected. But then they feel that they are something, but others also should feel, right? <laughs> so others don't see any qualities in them. So this desire that I should be worshipped, I should be respected, this is a demonic quality. Because a person who is having wonderful qualities, he will be like a tree having a lot of fruits. So when a tree is having a lot of fruits, so at that time, the tree will bend. Naturally, the tree will bend. So a person who is having wonderful qualities, divine qualities, he will remain humble. He will never show off. He will never uh, speak about it or you know, ex uh, express that he should be respected or something like that. But then, the demonic ones are like those trees which are standing straight, you know, who does not have any fruits in it, which are useless. So in this way, we understand that these demonic people, they desire, desire to be worshipped, desire to be respected. So we can analyze, you know, when we're speaking about all this, do I have this quality? If yes, then we have to do something about it. Now, next thing that is given is about Krodha and Parushya. Over trifles, they become very angry and speak harshly, not gently. I'm sure you know, all of us might have come across so many people in this world and also we might have come across our own selves doing this. For small, small thing, small, small thing, people go crazy now in this age of Kali. No tolerance at all. Small things, big fights. And those fights you know, will be so, so, so you know, disastrous because people literally shoot bullets from their mouth which will kill the other person. So harsh, so harsh. One of the divine quality is to speak in such a way that the other person will not be agitated. But the demonic people who are there or the ones who have these demonic qualities, they will make sure that they will agitate the other people. So this is what is Parushya. They will speak harshly and crow the for small, small things they will become angry. And then here it is talked about Ajnana. They do not know what should be done and what should not be done. They do everything whimsically according to their own desire and they do not recognize any authority. So demonic quality, it comes or it is you know, something which uh, is shown when the person is not following the Vedic scriptures, when the person is not under an authority, a spiritual authority. So it's a very, very important thing to follow Vedic scriptures, especially Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam as it is. If we don't follow, we naturally fall under the category of demons. And since they don't read Shastra, they don't read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, what happens? They will not have discrimination power, what is right, what is wrong. Whimsically, they will think whatever the mind is telling, that to be correct. And whatever the mind does not like, that to be false. So this is a very important point to note. Demons or the ones who have demonic qualities, they are fully controlled by the mind 
and they listen only to the mind they don't accept any authority this is a very very disastrous quality again which can destroy the person because as it is said in bhagavad gita 6 chapter the mind which is not controlled is the greatest enemy and the mind which is controlled is best of friends so that these these demonic people they have a mind which is uncontrolled but obvious that mind will be the greatest enemy of these personalities and finally here prabhupada is saying that these demonic qualities are taken on by them from the beginning of their bodies in the wombs of their mothers and as they grow they manifest all these inauspicious qualities so maybe from the past life some some scar some impressions and when uh, the lady is pregnant you now she might do some demonic activities which will have a good number of impressions on the child who is there in the womb so like this when the child comes out of the womb these qual- these samskaras these impressions are already there slowly and steadily these qualities will start fully manifesting and then you now we'll be able to realize oh it was a demonic child so it's a very important point to note as devotees we should aspire to remove these demonic qualities if we have within us surely you no know, these qualities will be there in minute quantities in us if not fully but then it's our duty to pray to krishna and make sure we chant the hare krishna maha mantra very nicely means every mantra every maha mantra every word in the maha mantra when it goes into our ears it directly goes into our heart it, and it cleanses the heart it removes all the contamination so when the contamination is removed cheto darpanam arjanam when the contamination is removed basically it means the impressions are removed and when the impressions are removed then these qualities will not exist hmm. artificially we cannot do it no i'll not become proud oh i'll not do this oh i'll no i'll not desire for getting respect all this will come naturally we are in the age of kali a, a age full of darkness so naturally we will also have darkness within our heart so what are we supposed to do we have to make sure that we do bhakti intensely and invite krishna into our heart chant the holy names intensely 16 rounds of hare krishna maha mantra read bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is given for that so that we understand what is right what is wrong make a proper discrimination between the two and associate with those devotees who are divine qualities we associate with those who are demons we will become demons we associate with those who are like devatas we will become like them and then the prasad the food that we eat that should be prasad offered to krishna basically the sattvic food in the future chapter we'll see you know that uh, how are the foods categorized also hmm. and obviously you not know, rendering service so it's very important to have physical association of devotees so i always recommend that go to the nearby iskon temple and render some service so when we do all these different things without our notice the bluish blackish boy will do all the needful he will come with his flute and peacock feather and he will come and clean the heart he will give us the divine qualities and then he'll take us back home back to god and also so this is what we have to do just to depend on that bluish blackish boy who is so beautiful who is who is just attracting anyone and everyone except us so we're just waiting for that day when he'll attract us also when we are fully purified so in this way krishna has given a list of the demonic qualities now there's a problem arjuna is hearing all this he heard divine qualities now here here is hearing demonic qualities so arjuna might be thinking oh now i am in a war so when i am killing all of them so does that mean that i am also having these demonic qualities just to help arjuna understand that he is not a demon krishna is speaking the next verse so let's see that in the next video hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna